value at risk. Talk to me. All I really want to see is the I don't really need to be any the Hey everyone, Tino here, aka The Dirty Quant, and welcome to another episode. You're probably here because you try to understand value at risk, you're finding it tricky, you've tried the formulas, they're just not sticking into your noggin, so let me try and help you with this one. So the way I like to think about it is, you know, you, you're trying to face winter, right? So you need to buy a jacket. So what kind of jacket do you buy? You're not Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk. You can't just buy a new jacket every day as you wish. You could have bought it. That's hilarious. Buy just one jacket. Let's not be greedy. So what kind of jacket should you buy? How thick, you know, how expensive is this jacket gonna be? You know, um, let's just say that the more money you buy, the better the jacket's gonna be, right? So you think, well, the question you gotta ask yourself is how much sort of cold can you tolerate? So you gotta sort of, get to i think it's we all do this we, we dress um up to the point where you know what at the limits you know when it's like really really cold look those days are unavoidable but most of the time we're fine you know like this jacket's keeping me warm and it's all good so it's up to you to really decide you know how much you really want to spend on this jacket to try and, and predict okay what's the next what's this winter going to look like so let's say let's go to an extreme let's say you pick uh you know what don't need the jacket singlet and thongs that will do me if you're not from australia this is what that looks like. So very smart attire. And you know, you think it's gonna be a classic Queensland summer. Uh, it's gonna be just, you know, mosquitoes and Bundy rum, right? And you're wrong. And you're, it's so cold every day you curse your existence, right? So you got it wrong. You know, you, you, you went too light. What if, what if you go the other way around? You know what, this, this, this winter, I'm gonna go to the max. I'm gonna go for the Patagonia frozen range. I'm gonna spend a thousand bucks on a jacket, right? Nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna get to me. And unfortunately, you get sent to Furnace Creek, California, hottest place on earth, and it feels like you're on the surface of the sun every day. You got it completely wrong. So those are extremes, right? So you want something like in between. Obviously, either you picked the wrong item of clothing, or you uh, you predicted where you're gonna be. So you're gonna be in a cold place or a warm place. You want it just just sort of right. So that's really the challenge. You're trying to optimize for that. There's really three numbers to really think about. One is like how cold it's gonna be. So think of how cold it's gonna be. What's the sort of coldest uh, that it's gonna be and how much you can sort of tolerate. Um, the other thing is like the time horizon that you've got. Uh, usually, you know, it's like 100 days. So you've got the next three months or so. You say, this is all I've got to sort of think about. Um, that's my time span, right? And the, the third piece of the puzzle is how many days can the can I tolerate sort of temperature dropping below a certain level, right? So you know what? It's fine. Handful, of, usually we'll just say five, right? So five out of those 100 days, temperature's going to drop below a certain level. It's going to be cold. It's going to be uncomfortable. But most of the time, you're going to be nice and warm, sleep comfy, easy, all is good. And that's really value at risk in, in a nutshell. No, this is me in a nutshell. Help, I'm in a nutshell. You know, it's just trying to to solve this sort of problem where it's it's um it's forecasting really problem. It's a forecasting problem and you know most of the time it would be dynamic you know i've made an ex extreme here that you can't change your jacket but obviously that number goes up and down with sort of market events right um you know uh so that's that's sort of really it so trying to adapt and forecast you know what your potentially what the volatility is going to be like and uh and it's okay, you don't want to sort of be too extreme because I can just set it to such a, such a big number and, you know, say, well, it's never going to be, you know, below minus 200%. Well, clearly not. But you said you, you want to be, uh, you want to be at a certain level that you tolerate a certain amount of days, certain amount of breaches, essentially. That's when it's actually your returns fall below a certain number. Um, because you know you want you, you actually you want to risk in your portfolio risk is return but obviously you don't want to be wiped out you want to be only as you know you want to be protected and uh, there's all sort of parameters around it and there's more complex sort of um, w ways to uh, measure this such as conditional value at risk you know CVAR which really takes the shape of uh, 
of the breach into consideration not only is it going to be like minus uh below a certain number but actually how far you know what's the shape of a tail and, it, and it's sort of a bit too complex for this sort of level of conversation but there's different ways of sort of measuring it and also um you know doing tests on your value at risk going how good was my model you know um because yes there were five breaches or well first of all how many times was my um were my returns below a certain number you know how many times did it breach hopefully it should be five um but then at the same time you know were these did you you could arguably just set a straight line until you know five returns are below that and then you're, you're done but actually there's actually more tests which i'd like to cover in another episode of um were these sort of you know deterministic or not but anyway hope you enjoyed that and uh, i'll catch you next one cheers bye